so welcome back. Here's where we left off. We have pieces that we can swap around. They do this cool elastic bounce, and then if we get three in a row, it'll detect a match. What we want to do today is make it so that those matches get destroyed. To do this, we're going to use two things. We're going to use a state machine, and we're going to use a timer node. So let's dive right in. So if we take a look at our game window here, uh, the first thing I want to do is add to it a timer node. Let me make this bigger so I can see everything a little bit better. So with my game window highlighted, I'm going to add a timer node. And I'm going to change the name of this to destroy timer. Destroy underscore timer. I'm going to set my wait time on this to half a second. And I don't want it to be one shot. Well, no, I do want it to be one shot. I don't want it to auto start. Um, now, I want to make a connection between this and my grid. Because I want when this, I want my grid to be able to start this up. And then once this is started, I want it to be able to send a signal to my grid to tell it to do something. So I'm going to be using one of my favorite parts of Godot, the signal system. So down here in the inspector, if you look right next to it, you have a node tab. Node tab allows you to set signals for a node or to put a node into different groups. Groups are kind of like tags if you're used to Unity. So I'm going to use signals. The most used signal for timers is timeout. So I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to make a connection. And I might need to change. Yeah, I need to change the size of my window because my, uh, my recording controls are right over it. OK, so I need to connect. And now I need to choose what I'm connecting it to. I'm connecting it to my grid. And then this is the method it's going to create. So I'm going to just connect it right there. And it'll automatically open up the script I connected it to. I will come back to this in just a second. So what I want to do is I already have my find matches method here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to make another method that checks to see if any of the pieces are matched. And if they are, freeze them from the queue, which means destroy. So in here, I'm going to do function. Uh, we'll call this destroy matched. And what I want destroy matched to do is I want it to go through everything that's in all pieces. So for i and width, and for j and height, if all pieces, oops. And I'm going to have to start protecting in case something is null. So if all pieces i, j is not equal to null, the reason I have to do that is um, I'm going to have situations where I can have blank spaces on the board, and I don't want that to muck up any of my logic. So if all pieces ij is not equal to null, then I want to check to see if it's matched. So if all pieces, oops, would help if I could spell correctly, ij dot matched. So if it's matched, then I'm going to queue free it. So Q U E U E Q free. And what I want to wait, okay, all of a sudden I can't remember. Is it Q free all underscore pieces? IJ or is it IJ or is it all pieces IJ dot Q free? I think it's all pieces IJ dot Q free. <laughs> we'll find out in a second if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Uh, all pieces IJ dot Q free. All right, cool. So this is a really, really simple method. It's just going to destroy the pieces on destroy timer timeout. So when that timer finishes, I'm just going to call destroy matched. So I can get rid of these pass statements since I don't need them anymore. And I can get rid of this one. Now I just have to start the timer. So to start the timer, um, I'm going to go to where I'm finding matches. And at the end of find matches, outside of all of my for loops and my if statements, I'm just going to call, uh, I'm just going to start the timer. Now I need to have a reference to that timer though. So I'm going to grab it. So I'm going to do get parent. And from the parent, I want to get the node of destroy timer. And what I want to do with destroy timer is start. Gosh, 
I'm so inconsistent with this. I'm getting, I'm getting better, but I'm so inconsistent about ending my lines with uh, semicolons versus not. I am, I am sorry. All right, so I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna use scene, uh, save all scenes. I'm gonna go out of distraction free mode so I can see my debug statements. Um, yeah, and let's try this out. Let's see how much I broke it. So let's make a match. Cool. But now, haha, -ha, see that? I made a, uh, let me just go through that again just to make sure everybody saw what happened. So if I make a match, okay, so they're gone. Now if I pull into that blank space where there was a piece but there isn't a piece anymore, um, it has an issue. And the reason why is I'm trying to call move on something that doesn't exist anymore. So I'm going to have to do, oh, okay, well, hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm back now. Okay, so what I want to do is when I destroy the piece, so I'm going to go back here to my destroy matched. After I queue free it, I'm going to set all pieces ij to null. And then uh, when I'm moving pieces around, which I'm doing to do, do, do touch difference, swap pieces. So in swap pieces, I want to make sure before I go anywhere else that um, first piece and other piece aren't null. So uh, in swap pieces method, uh, first thing I do is declare the first piece and the other piece. So before I go any further, I'm going to say if uh, first piece does not equal null and other piece does not equal null. Then I can do all the rest of this. So now I'm going to have to indent each of these lines. And so there, I'm only doing this if first piece is not null and if, uh, not what I meant to do, if first piece is not null and if other piece is not null. So let me save all my scenes and that should fix it, but let's find out. Um, okay, so let's make a match goes away. And now I can swipe into there without causing any problems. I can make another match, goes away. I can swipe into there without any problems. Another match, goes away. Another match, goes away. I can do all kinds of swipe in here, but I'm not causing any problems when I'm swiping into a null space or from a null space. Um, okay, cool. So, that's how to destroy pieces. Uh, next, we'll talk about how to collapse columns. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you learned anything, feel free to give me a like. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join the Discord, where I'm going to try to chat a bit more often than I have been lately. Um, and yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.